Mark serves as President and CEO of Hawaiian Airlines Inc. and the parent company Hawaiian Holdings Inc. Now in its 85th year of consecutive service. Uh, this is the airline, not Mark. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year of consecutive exactly. service. Uh, Hawaiian is Hawaii's biggest and longest serving airline. They're also the largest provider of passenger flights between the US mainland and Hawaii. Mark joined Hawaiian in 2002. He was reminding us 11 years since he went to Hawaii, which is the longest he's lived anywhere. He must like it. Uh, he joined as president and COO. And during that 11 years, the company has become the leading US airline for operational performance. Those of you who follow this stuff, you'll see that Hawaiian is always at or near the top um, for on time and re fewest number of lost bags. And they deliver the highest levels of customer service. They've also been, of course, one of the more financial US carriers, just follow their stock price um, over the last year or so. Prior to joining Hawaiian, Mark was COO at Sabina Airlines Group in Brussels. He has also served leadership roles at Worldwide Flight Services and at British Airways, which is where I first met Mark. Mark is a member of the Board of Directors of Airlines for America, A4A, the Hawaiian Visitors and Convention Bureau, the Hawaiian Business Roundtable, and the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. More importantly, Mark is a licensed pilot. In fact, he's a veteran performer at aerobatic competitions. In 2002, Mark was the US Northeast Regional Advanced Aerobatic Champion. Now, I've had the pleasure of flying with Mark in his aerobatic aeroplanes. It's pretty thrilling. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to welcome the President CEO of Hawaiian Airlines, my very good friend and colleague, Mark Dunkley. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Thank you all very much, and thank you for that warm reception, and thank you all for braving the cold to uh, be here for this luncheon today. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us, and one that we don't often get, to uh, bring uh, something of our business and our outlook to the attention of such a great group as this. Uh, as Barry mentioned, Hawaiian Airlines was uh, founded uh, well, 85 years ago, but uh, just uh, 15 years after the founding of the, there we go, uh, founding of the airline industry. Um, and we've been in continual service ever since. We started flying between the islands of the state, uh, a role which we still perform today, and it's a very important role for our business. And this is a photograph of the first airplane that we uh, operated, the Belanca Pacemaker. During those 85 years, we've had a bunch of um, pretty notable firsts. We were the, for example, the first airline uh, with an all cargo certificate. We were the uh, first airline to uh, secure ETOPS certification out of the box without a period of proving runs ahead of time. And this photograph shows that we were the first airline ever to operate with an all female crew. Along the way, however, there were some times of some disappointments for uh, our business. Uh, we're a company that uh, filed Chapter 11 twice over a 10-year period. Uh, it's a business that um, really struggled uh, before deregulation to get traction with the then CAB and to secure uh, some route rights beyond the Hawaiian Islands, and then when uh, Airline deregulation came about in the late 70s, early 80s. Hawaiian Airlines had a great deal of difficulty finding its place in the world. It's an airline that operated DC-8s and charter service all over the place. We used to have a crew base in Milan, Italy, and in Athens, Greece. Hardly places that resonate when you think of Hawaii. Um, in 2000 and uh, beginning of 2003, we filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy for the second time. Over the course of the next uh, two and a half years, we worked through our bankruptcy, uh, and we emerged uh, in 2005, having at the time uniquely been an airline which paid its creditors back 100 cents on the dollar. Um, during that time, we had fixed a number of fairly basic things about the business. 
things that we needed to uh, rectify going forward. But uh, on emergence, we were still fundamentally operating in the same shell that we'd had going in. We were a predominantly domestic carrier with about 70% of our revenues coming from our long haul operation from the west coast to Hawaii, 30% flying between uh, the islands of the state. We were thinly capitalized as a business. 100% uh, of our fleet was leased. Uh, most of our fleet, uh, most of our employees thought that the place you get uh, new aircraft is from a desert. Um, in, it was, took them some time to appreciate that uh, uh, there are people still building them. Um, uh, but we had, uh, therefore, quite a task ahead of us emerging from bankruptcy. We had to essentially establish our place uh, in the world. We chose, as we looked around, to uh, invest in, in aircraft uh, and to keep much of what we have, had previously done uh, the same. We, we chose to keep our focus on being the, what we have termed uniquely, I would uh, believe, the destination carrier that we are. We sell Hawaii. We sell the Hawaii experience. We embrace it in essentially everything that we do. We don't pretend to be uh, an important network carrier. We don't in pretend uh, to be a point-to-point -to -point -to carrier with the kinds of unit costs where your main selling propo proposition is the lowness of your fares. Instead, we recognize that for most of the, uh, almost everybody who comes to Hawaii has this wonderful, warm, gilded view of uh, the Hawaii experience, and it's an experience that we uh, work very hard to authenticate in everything that we do. Looking forward from the vantage point of 2005, we thought that this continued to be the thing that we had to, uh, to have uh, foremost in our business. But with that said, the question really uh, established itself, what do we do with this newly emerging carrier, thinly capitalized, uh, reasonably good uh, cost base? Interestingly enough, we uh, were an airline that did not cut uh, employees' pays through the bankruptcy process. We had back then and continue to have employees with a tremendous amount of engagement in our business. So we look really at the macro picture, the big global picture in trying to decide where to put our um, uh, company's uh, business into the future. And we identified two enormously important trends that we believe uh, leave us on the right side of um, where the uh, economic activity in this world is going to take place. The first is that there is a global trend towards leisure travel. And this seems a little bit counterintuitive um, in this day and age because so much of the awareness, particularly in a business center like New York, and particularly in Washington, D.C., where we've recently seen the issue of the U.S. Airways American uh, merger played out um, in, uh, in front of policymakers. Uh, so much of the debate is focused on business travelers and the needs of the business traveler. But as you can see, over this period of time, um, uh, over this 10-year uh, period of time, people anticipate that business travel will grow about 55%. Our bets are on leisure travel, and uh, we believe very strongly um, that that uh, is a terrific place to be, not only because you see the growth in leisure travel over a 10-year window, but actually we see that as a permanent shift um, that will define air travel going forward uh, for decades yet to come. But having decided that we're going to continue to be a leisure carrier, um, and that uh, we were going to continue to have a 
Hawaii as our main focus as a destination carrier. The question presented itself, where were we going to take uh, this business model out into the future? And it is here that the second big important macro trend uh, presented itself. Some of this uh, won't be particularly new. The notion, that is, that Asia uh, is the place where businesses ought to be in the future. But as I travel often to the East Coast, and I travel throughout the United States, it is still to me uh, somewhat as of a surprise how um, we don't fully yet appreciate exactly the magnitude and the depth of the global economic shift that we're faced with. Here you see a chart of uh, GDP. Um, and on the red, you can see China, Japan, and India. The blue is the United States. Europe is that other color. Um, and this is how the world's economic activity has divided for the last 2,000 years. <laughs> and what we are seeing, and what we are seeing is that the reality that we think of a world dominated by the Western economic powers is actually a short interlude in what is a far more normal situation. And that normal situation is that GDP correlates to population. Essentially, up until the steam engine in, 19, in 1829, the middle of the 19th century, um, up until that period of time, the productive cap capacity of an individual was essentially similar no matter where they lived. And therefore, where the centers of population were was where the economic activity would be the greatest. What we're seeing today is that this short, in historical terms, blink of an eye in which the factors of production uh, bias towards a relatively small population base uh, in Europe and in uh, most recently in North America is coming to an end. And that the Asian economic, the emerging market conversation we're having, the Asian economic miracle, isn't so much a miracle, but merely the restoration of the way things actually should be, and indeed will be, inevitably, uh, going forward. The US economy has grown by 140% over the last 20 years. Uh, it's still outpaced by others like uh, Australia, Korea, and of course, China. Over the last 20 years, Chinese GDP has grown 13-fold, to give a sense of context, 140% versus 13 times uh, for China. And it is into this global shift that Hawaiian Airlines is very, very clearly placing its bets. Uh, how big is the opportunity represented by uh, riding the wave of, Asian of the growth in Asia? Well, we're very fortunate that, Asia, that uh, people living in Asia who have the means to travel have a tremendous affinity for Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii is by far and away the most frequented destination for, US, for Asian travelers visiting the United States. An astonishing 40% of all Japanese travel to the United States is to Hawaii. Uh, so when we think of um, uh, how uh, big uh, Hawaii is as a destination, um, uh, you need really have in mind the importance uh, of the Asian traveler. And to put that a little bit uh, in context for you, at the peak of the Japanese boom, it's really today only Japan that has got um, a, broad, a broad middle class with the degree of affluence able to uh, consider uh, international travel. Other Asian countries uh, are coming along very, very quickly. But if you look at the peak, which is 1990, I think 1992, uh, the number of airline seats, and that's a proxy for passengers, between New York and London was just shy of two and a quarter uh, million. The, 
The, uh, in fact, that number is, I think, wrong. I think it's about two, uh, two million, and the first two is not there in the, um, uh, in the London to New York uh, city. From Japan to Honolulu, the number of uh, seats in the same time frame was 25% greater. Okay? So when we stop and we think about a massive, massive market, a massive business market, London, New York, and we think about a leisure market out of Asia to one city, which is Honolulu, uh, you can see the sheer scale of travel from what is not going to be one of the largest uh, economic countries in Asia uh, as we roll out over the next generation or two. So it really is a terrific, terrific opportunity uh, for Hawaiian Airlines and for Hawaii in general. And to put it into, put it another way, middle class consumer spending over the next 20 years. North America, uh, we, those of us involved in selling seats in North America are looking at consumer spending uh, increasing by about 10% over the next 20 years. Europe, largely I suspect because of the expansion of what Europe is defined as and of European population, uh, is looking more like a 10 to 15% uh, um, increase over the next 20 years. Sitting here on the east coast of the United States, um, we uh, have an awareness, uh, a growing awareness about uh, sub-Saharan Africa and the African continent in general, Middle East and Africa, and you can see some fairly impressive doubling of uh, consumer spending over the next uh, 20 years. Uh, equally, um, here in, in the business uh, center of the United States, we think a lot about Latin America and the Caribbean. And Central and South America is going to see uh, a threefold increase in the level of consumer spending. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines, we've got our bet on the uh, growth in consumer spending of the middle class uh, in Asia, and that is uh, as a result of having looked at these statistics that show a almost six-fold growth uh, in the level of spending coming out of Asia uh, for the middle class consumer. It is against uh, this background with um, uh, leisure being increasingly a global focus for travel uh, and the power of Asia beginning to uh, unfold, that we think our, our corporate strategy of focusing on leisure and focusing on Asia uh, is the right way to go. Uh, travel is just beginning to grow uh, from Asia. Travel to the United States up 34% from Asia. Uh, we think that is actually a fairly modest increase in the context of uh, the economic growth that's going to take place. We have some famous um, hurdles to, to uh, contend with. The uh, visa regime between the United States and China, for example, makes travel far from straightforward and easy for nationals from China to the United States. Um, but notwithstanding that, uh, we think that the opportunity uh, is sufficiently important to keep uh, plugging away at it. Travel's on the rise. To give it a sense of context, 3% of uh, the Japanese visited the United States uh, in 2012. So if we do a bit of math just to uh, show how that unfolds for the United States. So that was 3.8 uh, million uh, visitors, uh, almost 2 million of which um, uh, visited Hawaii. Canada and Mexico combined represent, uh, as you can see there, uh, a number of like 35 million uh, total visitors today to the United States. If we're to apply the 3% that visited Japan, uh, of Japanese that visited the United States to the population uh, of the Chinese middle class, you can see that the number would be um, approaching 40 million uh, greater than the, than the combined numbers of visitors from the NAFTA countries of Mexico uh, and Canada in the United States. Now, we're not saying that this is going to happen overnight. Far from it. 
Uh, but what we are saying is that um, as but we are saying that this over time is a fairly inevitable uh, outcome and that uh, we believe that by betting essentially on the big macro shifts in the world, uh, Hawaiian Airlines can best position itself for the future. How are we doing this? By pressing forward. There we go. Bunch of new routes started, started uh, very recently, 2010. Uh, as I mentioned, we came out of bankruptcy in 2005. We spent the next two years working on uh, our corporate strategy, discovered that we didn't have a fleet entirely appropriate for the uh, missions that we wanted to fly. Uh, met uh, with, um, with all of the manufacturers. We're fortunate to get uh, a transaction with Airbus done, and the first aircraft arrived in 2010. Uh, 2010, we inaugurated Tokyo, and since then, uh, we've got the best part of a dozen new international routes um, starting, uh, or have started recently. Beijing comes up for us next month. We're excited about uh, that start. Uh, we hope that um, with such good macroeconomic omens uh, for the number of visitors to Hawaii from this very high spending group of affluent uh, Chinese visitors, uh, that that may yet lead to a very substantial uh, change and increase in our network going into the future. In order to do that, and one of the ways in which we have sought to differentiate ourselves um, from our competitors is we're in the midst of turning ourselves into uh, a, a, an Asian, a, an airline that delivers a uh, service that is appropriate to our Asian customers. Um, it is uh, an interesting and valuable exercise internally to take our entire uh, focus shifting um, away from a fairly natural domestic uh, focus into um, more a focus that is more uh, adapts more readily to the differing needs of our Asian visitors. Uh, we have all kinds of obvious things that we do. We have um, multi-language uh, speakers on all of our aircraft. We have, of course, uh, all of our written material in the foreign languages. But it goes far beyond that. Um, we're fortunate in Hawaii that Hawaii itself represents all of the cultures of Asia, and using that, we have um, inculcated many, many service aspects uh, to our, um, uh, our service offering uh, on board. Our employees have absolutely embraced this. Uh, it's a journey for them, uh, as interesting and as stimulating as it is uh, for the rest of us. So as we go forward, um, we intend absolutely uh, to use our 85 years of history uh, to bring about a, um, a view to the future that is uh, informed by the changes in the, the global economy, uh, the changes in demographics, uh, and we are working hard to make sure that all of the good that's happened in the last 85 years uh, is is the seed for the next 85 years uh, of success for our company. Linda Larson with Mass Flight. Right. You've talked about your expansion to the east, and my colleagues here with the Port Authority are pleased that you're starting service from JFK. So what are your thoughts on looking west to the domestic US to feed these routes? Uh, the first thing I'd say, Linda, th thank you for the question, is sort of interestingly, you know, where you stand depends on where you sit. And from us, of course, coming uh, to coming to New York is to travel east and to go to Asia is to travel west. So it's sort of uh, it, 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 the other way around. But um, uh, for us, I, I think we're, you know, we're pretty uh, clear in our mind that our travel from uh, the mainland U.S. is predominantly Hawaii bound. Um, it is not per se there to, um, to connect. Why? Uh, geography does not bless us with a great deal of natural um, connecting opportunities uh, because the circuity is really quite large. Um, from here to Honolulu is about 
uh, 10 short hours if you're traveling on us, longer if you're traveling on the other guys. Um, <laughs> in the air, um, it, uh, once you get there and you're flying on to, for example, Tokyo, uh, at this time of year, Tokyo is about another 11, 11 and a half hours flying. Uh, so we don't lie because of the influence of the great circle and the world being round and fat in the middle and pointy at the top. Um, we don't actually uh, provide particularly good routing to most of Asia. There are a couple of exceptions to that, and that is uh, to Australasia, Oceania. Um, and there we do have some connecting possibilities. But by and large, uh, our focus selling out of North America is uh, to sell Hawaii as a destination, with the exception of Oceania, where we do actually have uh, really pretty good connections, and we would encourage you to take them uh, to go to Australia and New Zealand. Thank you, Mark. Uh, excellent, fascinating lunchtime presentation. Thank you. Um, we have a little plaque, if I may, Thank you. to commemorate your visit here, and you need to uh, put that one.